This is a video on how to use Simmons Catalyst. When you go into Simmons, you're going to come to this screen. You want to go ahead and click on Proceed. Simmons Catalyst is a database that reports on American consumer purchasing habits, viewing habits, demographics, and psychographics. Um, the information is based on in-person and mail-in surveys of more than 26,000 households. It is a fairly complex database and there are a lot of different things that you can do with it. I'm going to show you how to create a cross-tab, a cross-tabulation, looking at some purchasing habits. I'm going to keep this fairly simple, just mainly to show you how to use the database and how to create uh, a cross-tab. We have one account for Simmons. When you come into Simmons, um, into the home page, you will see every cross tab that has been created in this case since back to April. It doesn't create everything from the beginning. They, things do delete after a certain amount of time. When you save a cross tab or save a document, it will save to this list. Um, if you are doing a group project, you can create a folder. I would actually recommend you create a folder so that if you have multiple cross tabs or multiple documents, it will save them in one place. Also make sure to save something and give it a name that you know you can identify. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new report. Click on a new cross tab, click on new report, and then select cross tab. What you are looking at here is the composer. The composer is where you have all the different categories of information that is covered in Simmons. It can sometimes be useful to kind of cert, look through these to see what kind of information is available. It can also be really useful to search. Sometimes you can do a combination of both. You can use Simmons to look at so many different things. Uh, you can look explicitly at buying behavior, how many of something somebody is buying, the brand, uh, the amount spent. You can look at the buying behavior of a specific demographic. You can look at the behavior of somebody who buys something else. It can get really complex, as I mentioned. So I'm going to keep this simple and I'm going to look at who is spending money on shoes, specifically, specifically athletic shoes. I can do a search here for shoes. I'm going to search specifically for athletic shoes. I do know through experience that athletic shoes or shoes are under apparel and accessories. And I can look specifically at brands bought, number of pairs brought, bought. But if you search for athletic shoes, you can look at brands bought in the last 12 months. You can look at number of pairs and types of shoes or you can look at um, clothing shoes expenditures over the last 12 months. I actually wanna look at clothing shoes expenditures, um, specifically for athletic shoes. I'm gonna start my search fairly broad as opposed to going specifically to the brand. So I, and you see when I click on that, I get two different categories. What this does is it allows me to look at, to select different categories. So I wanna do people that bought between between $26 and $300 on shoes. And you'll see it to separate them into categories. Under here, you'll see I can select all of these things. I don't want to know everything. I just want to know what people are spending on athletic shoes. And then I click on add. So it creates athletic shoes, 26 to 50, uh, 51 to 100, 101 to 200, 201 to 300. This is my behavior, what people are doing, what people are buying. The composer allows you to then create a cross tab. So columns and rows. I'm going to select all. I'm going to put the purchasing habits in the column and then click here to put it in column or I can drop and drag. And then the row is where I'm going to put the demographic. I'm going to look at gender and age. So I can click on demographics and you'll see you have a choice of head of household, homemaker, household respondent, spouse. I'm going to look at respondent. What that means is the person that responded to the survey. You'll see age and age summary. If you click on age, you'll see you have 18 to 21. And then if you look, these age groups go up in five years. You will see that there is nothing below 18. Um, this survey is only adults, so 18 and above. There is also age summary. 
For this case, I'm gonna go ahead and do these broader ranges just as an example. And I'm gonna do 25 to 34, 35 to 44, and 55 to 64. And I'm gonna add. Now I wanna look at gender. I wanna look at men and women. But you'll see I'm not seeing that here. So you can do a couple of things. You can search. If I search for gender, it shows me psychographics, which is going to be people's attitude towards something, and that's not what I want. I can do men. I'm going to see demographics, respondent, bases. So what this is telling me, and then you click on base, and you're going to see men, women, adults, etc. They put gender and a few other things um, under base. I want to do men and women. Now, you did notice this was under base. There is also something over here for base. The base is who you are looking at, what they call the universe. Right now, without putting anything in the base, we are looking at all adults, everybody that took the survey. You can assign a base to look at all men or all women, or there are other ways that you can do assign a base. We're not going to do that. We're gonna leave the base alone and keep this a little simpler. But so I wanna look at men who are between these ages and women who are between these ages. So what you can do is you can create your own category using Boolean operators. So and, or, not, etc. So what I can do is I can select men and then 25 and 34 and say and. And that creates a group of men between the ages of 25 and 34. I want that in the row, I'm gonna drag it over. I have to do that for every category. I tend to do these one by one like this because when you're doing a lot of them, it can get really it can get really easy to get kind of lost in the repetitiveness. If you do add something over into this section by accident, so in this case, I just dragged over the summary for um, the age summary for 55 to 64 and women, I don't want those over here separate. I just drag them back. And then when you're done with this, you have your column. So that's your behavior. You have your row, which is your demographics. And then we're leaving the base uh, empty. And then you can run your report. This will create your cross tab. Because I still have things left in here, it's, it's reminding me that I have things there. If I do go ahead and click yes and to continue, everything will be deleted and that's fine with me. You'll see here that this is untitled. I wanna go ahead and save this right away. You can, and then save. So this is your cross tab. You see the columns, that's where we have the behavior. The demographic is in the row. You can edit these if you wanna make them uh, easier to read. You see you have a list of numbers. You have five different Numbers to look at, you have unweighted, weighted, vertical, horizontal, and index. What do those mean? So let's talk a little bit about what the cross tab is. The first column is the study universe. So that's the total number of people. That's not something that we're really gonna look at. We're gonna focus mainly on the behaviors. So what do these numbers mean? Unweighted, weighted, vertical, horizontal. Unweighted is the number of people that responded to the survey that meet your criteria, the things that you are looking at. Weighted is the projected number of people that fit your criteria. And you'll see this is 000. This is not 12,800, it's 12.8 million. Vertical relates to the column. Horizontal relates to the row. And I will show what that means when you start reading the, the results. Index is the average. So let's go ahead and look at some of these results and talk about how to read them. I'm gonna start with this first column. We're gonna look at people that have spent between 26 and $50 on athletic shoes, and then look at how that, um, how that intersects with men between the ages of 25 and 34. When you read the results, you read down or vertical and across or horizontal. When we look at this category, people that have spent between 26 and $50 on athletic shoes in the last year, we say of all the people who, now because we didn't assign a base, we're looking at all adults. So of all the people who have spent between 26 and $50 in the last 12 months on athletic shoes, 
10.76% of them we come across are men between the ages of 25 and 34. So we read down to the vertical number and then across. When we read horizontal or across, um, we go the opposite. Of all the men between the ages of 25 and 34, when we go to the horizontal, 6% of them have spent 26 to $50 on athletic shoes in the last 12 months. So this is looking at all adults and their behaviors, and this is looking at just men between this age. So you're looking at two different groups of people. The index is 119. You'll see up here the index is 100, that's the average. If you see an index of 119, that means they are 19% more likely, men between the ages of 25 and 34, are 19% more likely than the average to have spent 26 to $50 on athletic shoes in the last 12 months. Let's look at another number. Let's look at men between the ages of, mm, let's do 35 and 44 and 51 to 100. So again, we're gonna start with the down of all the people who have spent between 51, $50, 50 and $100 on athletic shoes in the tw past 12 months, go to vertical, 8.74% of them are between, uh, are men between the ages of 35 and 44. Of all the men between the ages of 35 and 44, 17.42% of them have spent 50 to $100 on athletic shoes in the last year. Uh, men between the ages of 35 and 44 are 8% more likely than the average to have spent 50 to $100 um, in the last year. If you compare the index numbers, you'll notice that it tends to track the vertical number. As the index, as the vertical number goes up or down, the index tends to go up and down. So what this is telling me, just that these two categories, Men between the ages of 25 and 34 are more likely to spend 26 to $50 on shoes. If we go to the next category, if we were to scroll across just between 25 and 34 year olds, we'll see here the index is 112. Um, of all those that have spent between 50 and 100 in the last year, 10% of them are men between the ages of 25 and 34. Of all the men between the ages of 25 and 34, 18% of them have spent this much money you'll start noticing this index number gets lower and lower. This number is getting higher. Of all the men between the ages of 25 and 34, 19.63% of them have spent between $100 and $200 on athletic shoes. Of all those that have spent between $100 and $200, 9.64% of them are, are men between the ages of 25 and 34. But this number is going down, and you'll even see that when you get into the 200 to 300, it goes down even more. What this is telling me is that men between the ages of 24, 25 and 34 are less likely to spend more on shoes. And that makes sense when you consider where someone is in their life, what kind of money they're making, they probably don't have as much expendable income. When you start looking at other ages, 25 to 34, this index goes down between 26 and 50. And again, looking at index, it looks like they're more likely in general to spend more money. And it's a little green arrows are giving you that indicator. Use the index as a guide. It's not always gonna be the absolute answer that you are looking for, but it is a good way to kind of get an overview. So if we look at 100 to 200, of all those that have spent 100 and 200 in the last year on athletic shoes, 10.27% of them are men between the ages of 35 and 44. Of all men between the ages of 35 and 44, 23.4% of them have spent uh, between 100 and 200 dollars in the last year. And they're 27% more likely than the average. So that was looking at men. If we scroll down and look at women, We'll see some similar trends. Between the ages of 35 and 44, the index is going up significantly. Uh, of all those that have spent between two and 300 on athletic shoes in the last three years, 12.3% are women between the ages of 35 and 44. 
of all the women between the ages of 35 and 44, 7.59 percent of them have spent 300 to 200 to 300 dollars in the last 12 months but the index is 148 so they're 48 percent more likely if we look at this one this number the number of women the percentage of women that are spending money on these shoes is 21 they're 21 percent more likely and here they're 48 but the number of women that are spending the shoes is significantly lower the index tends to track the vertical. It tends to track what's in the column um, over the row. So that's why this can be important, but it's not gonna be the end all be all. Because if you look at this, the unweighted is 311 versus 1,000. So it really kind of depends on what you are looking for. This market, women that are spending 200 to $300, women between, between the ages of 35 and 44 who are spending two to three hundred dollars on athletic shoes, the number of women doing that is is lower. This is the the number that um, that responded to the survey that meet, meet your criteria. This is the projected 1.5, almost 1.6 million women between the ages of 35 and 44 are spending two to three hundred dollars on athletic shoes. But if we look at this one, it's 4.6, almost 4.7 million women uh, between the ages of 35 and 44 are spending one to two hundred dollars. So it really kind of depends on what your overall goal is and what you are trying to do. This this is going to be a larger group. So this is a larger group of people. This is going to be a more targeted group of people. So that's something to think about when you are running through these reports. So what I'm getting out of this is really men and women between, between the ages of 35 and 44 um, are more likely to spend more money on athletic shoes than the lower and upper age range that I am looking at. So now that I know, now that I have this general idea that men and women between the ages of 35 and 54 um, are the ones that are most likely to spend more money on athletic shoes, I want to go back and look at what brands they are buying. I can go back to Composer. It keeps my row and my columns, and I can create a new report that will just change the criteria in this. Or I can create another cross tab. So that would keep the original cross tab, and then I can create another one. So I have multiple cross tabs. The benefit between creating a new cross tab is that means I will have multiple reports. You can export these to Excel, so then I would be able to go back and compare these reports. That would be the benefit of creating a second cross tab. Using the same cross tab can make it easier because I already have some things created. So it really kind of depends on what your ultimate goal is. I'm just going to go ahead and use the same composer so that I don't have to create everything. I'm going to delete everything from the columns, and then I'm going to change the row. I want to keep the 25 to 34 and I want to delete the others. Okay, and I'm going to keep that as the row. And then I'm going to look at brand. So I know from looking through this, I can click on athletic shoes and I want to look at brands. I'm not going to look at all of them. I'm going to select a few and then add them. I can highlight all of them and then put them in the column and then run the report. So now we're looking at what kind of our key demographic who we know are spending money on shoes. We can see what brands they are buying. So same thing, read down and across. Of all the adults, of all the people who have purchased Adidas in the last 12 months, 10.9% of them, almost 11%, are men between the ages of 35 and 44. Of all the men between the ages of 35 and 44, 17.86% of them have purchased Adidas in the last 12 months. 35 to 44 year old men are 35% more likely than the average to have purchased Adidas in the last 12 months. So we can look at Converse and we can see pretty quickly that that's not a big market. People that have purchased uh, Converse in the last 12 months, just, about, just under 6% of them are men between the ages of 35 and 44. Of all the men between the ages of 35 and 44, 2.52% of them have purchased Converse in the last uh, two months. At 70, with an index of 74, 
that means that men, 35 to 44 year old men are 26% less likely than the average to purchase Converse. If we look at Jordans, find Jordans in the last 12 months, 13.3% of them are men between the ages of 35 and 44. Of all those men, of 35 to 44 year old men, 3.5 per 6, 6% 6 of them have purchased Jordans. But if you look at the index again, men between the ages of 35 and 44 are 65% more likely than the average to have purchased Jordans in the last 12 months. And you'll see that number, that index goes up with the vertical. And then you'll see here, even though of all the men between the ages of 35 and 44, 25% of them have purchased Nikes, of all of those that have purchased Nikes, only 9.9% are 35 to 44 year old men. So that index has gone down. The an index of 23 is still, of 123 is still high. They're still 23% more likely than the average to have purchased Nikes. And then if we look at older men, you'll see some of those numbers are going down. It looks like they're more likely to purchase Adidas than Converse. Uh, Jordans or Nikes as a whole. Now, if we look at women, of the adults that have purchased Adidas in the last 12 months, 11.4% of them are women between the ages of 35 and 44. Of all the women between the ages of 35 and 44, 18.2% of them have purchased Adidas in the last year. And they are 38% more likely than the average to have purchased Adidas. We look at Converse, whereas men are not buying Converse. We can see quickly that women are. Of all the adults that have purchased Converse in the last 12 months, 15% are women between the ages of 35 and 44. While the women between the ages of 35 and 44, 6.2% of them have purchased Converse in the last 12 months. And they're 83% more likely than the average to have purchased Converse in the last 12 months. And you'll see similar numbers, 27, 37, with uh, Jordans and with Nikes. And you'll see the same thing here. The index tends to trend up and down with the vertical. So index, as I said, is a guide, but it's not going to tell you everything. Um, there are more women between the ages of 35 and 44 that have purchased Nikes in the last 12 months than have purchased Converse in the last 12 months. But these women are still more likely than the average to have purchased Converse in the last 12 months. So the index is not always gonna be everything. These indexes are still really high, so that, that's a good market. When I come back to the homepage, you'll see this is the report that I was running. If this is something that I want to save, or export, I can come back to the home page, click on the three dots, click on Excel, and it will save, automatically save that file as an Excel. If I want to come back and do some more work on this, I just come back into Simmons, click on crosstab, it automatically brings me into the composer, and then you'll see it saved the two different reports that I ran and then that untitled one that I never actually used. That is an overview on how to use Simmons. Please let me know if you have other questions.